in this lecture, I will talk more about value and marketing strategy. So we, talk, we said that I mean marketing is about value, but value has I mean different connotations. There are different concepts that we use value. So one of them is the offered value. So the value offered by the company, by the product, by the brand. However, it's not necessarily the value perceived by the consumer. So the consumer might, might have a different perceived value for the product. So one of the first tasks of the marketer is actually to match the perceived value with the offered value. Okay. So actually in today's world, I mean, the perception is the reality. So it's not the subjective, tr objective truths that are important, but it's the subjective uh, understandings about or perceptions about the uh, phenomena, about the reality. And there is also something called brand value. Okay, so it's like uh, in addition to the value that it, that it offers as a uh, brand, brand value is also used uh, as something which the brand has okay like i mean brand equity and there is also company value or shareholder value so as the company becomes more profitable and sustainable the company will gain benefits and the, uh, th this is this is the value that the company the company gets now i would like to talk about value map so this is about the customer perceived value and the offered value, okay, okay which are the uh, basic concepts. So here, this chart shows on the x-axis, it shows the relative perceived value for the consumers. So on the left hand, it's, it, show, it goes from low to high. And on the y-axis, it shows the relative cost to the customer. So it's like, I mean, is like cost per value, okay, or value versus performance, okay, uh, whatever, whatever it is. So on the bottom of the diagonal line, it is low value. On the bottom of the diagonal line, it is high value. So the diagonal line, we call it as the fair value line. So which means that when you pay a price for that quality, for that value, then the price is fair. Okay, this is the fair value line. So when the value is low, but the cost is low, then we call it as an economic product or service. When the value is high, but cost is high as a luxury product, then we call it as a premium product or service. Or when the quality, when the value and the cost is equal to each other, we call it equal or value for money product. So let me give you some examples from the Turkish supermarket industry. So we can say, we can, we, I can give you different uh, supermarket examples. So Shok is a supermarket which is at the lower end of the market. There are others as well, Beam, Dia, other supermarkets as well, I mean, it's the same category. So for that category, the cost of the products is low but at the same time the value provided by the company is low on the upper line there is macro center so which is a premium supermarket when you go to the supermarket i mean it's like a luxury store so even the same product even the price for the same product is higher but the experience that you gain in the supermarket is different it's it provides a better value apparently they have different customer segments so the customer segments demand different levels of value from different service providers and there is migros in the in between in the middle it provides a good value at a better price than macro center but at a higher price than shock so we can assume initially that they are all in the same fair value line now let's look what happens if another company comes into the market, which is Carrefour, let's say, and when Carrefour starts to offer products at a, at a higher quality and at the same cost, okay, now we can say that the fair value line has shifted, shifted towards right, which means that 
now the consumers will gain more value from Carrefour by paying the same amount of money that they paid to Migros. Now Migros is relatively in a worse condition or shock is even at a worse uh, condition. Now what will happen is in order to be on the fair value line now shock and Migros have to adopt their strategies they need to either provide better quality products at the same price or they need to either uh, or they need to provide the same products at a lower cost so this is a good example showing the importance of the fair value line how the consumers perceive the quality the value and cost uh, of the products Actually, I mean, this is just a hypothetical and theoretical example. In reality, consumers are far from evaluating those rational uh, calculations. However, I mean, it's good for marketers to know about it and to make the precautions based on that foundations. And as for the value, I can say there are three main dimensions of value. I mean, you can say many of those, but I can summarize it into three. So one of them is operational excellence. Another one is customer intimacy. And another one is performance superiority. Okay. So the best companies, when you analyze the best companies in the world, I can say they are at least, at least good at in one of those. So we can say performance superiority is about innovation, keeping constant innovation about your products and services. Operational excellence is mostly about infrastructure, your technical and operations management, how you handle stuff. And customer intimacy is about your CRM, customer relationship management. So good companies, best companies, great companies, I mean, they are good at building those uh, three uh, pillars. If we give an example to those, I can say, I mean, Amazon is one of the best companies in terms of operational excellence. They have this infrastructure investment, huge infrastructure investments in terms of operational excellence. I can give Zappos as an example to the customer intimacy companies. So Zappos is a great company. Actually, they're also bought by Amazon. It's also part of an Amazon company. But they call themselves as a service company. Just happens to be selling shoes. So they are the first online company which sells shoes. And they are great at providing, uh, providing, customer providing great customer service, superior customer service. And Apple, we can say they are superior in terms of performance and innovation. And you can also argue these companies are also better at other dimensions as well, but these dimensions, we can say they are better than others. And let's talk about strategy. Um, actually, according to Michael Porter, there are three generic strategies. So one of them is low cost, another one is differentiation, and finally, focus. So in the low cost strategy, as I showed you in the, in the supermarket example, when you sell products at a lower cost, but with a lower value, then you can say it's a low cost strategy. So you are constant or operational excellence. I mean, you are concentrating on your infrastructure. So you are trying to put costs down. So you are trying to save every penny that you can save. Okay. Differentiation strategy. You are trying to, you are trying to build uh, innovation. You are trying to build different products for different customers. Focus. You are focusing on a target segment. You are focusing on building one method. So it's it, it has various applications. But what is strategy? What do we call a strategy? Strategy is something. I mean, it's it's a way of uh, doing business, but we call it a strategy when it is executed differently 
that even it, even the business is the same with the other businesses so it needs to be different and also the activities that are causing the strategy to be executed implemented need to be unique and valuable to the company so if the strategy can be replicated or copied then it's not a strategy at all i mean it might it can be a vision uh, it can be a plan but it's not a strategy okay if we apply strategy to the previous value dimensions that i told you before then i can say differentiation strategy is more about performance superiority low cost strategy is more about operational excellence and focus strategy is more about customer intimacy then how do i understand my company is best suited for which strategy or for which target segment or for which product group then maybe some of you or maybe all of you know about it a SWOT analysis uh, will be best suited for those kind of mar identifying marketing opportunities so it's you, you know what it's on one part it's about strengths and other weaknesses threats and opportunities so strengths and weaknesses are about the internal parts internal uh, features attributes of the company like advantages and disadvantages it can be location advantages or it can be location disadvantages it can be resources it can be features or it can be financial uh, dimensions consistency or different type of stuff for strengths and weaknesses for threats and opportunities are something external to the company like i mean for example in turkey we are living in a i mean in currently some election uh, period so there are some threats about elections or some economic uncertainty so these are external to the company so this is also something that we need to think about or opportunities there might be some collaboration opportunities there might be some technological innovation opportunities so we are all thinking about those as a uh, as identifying the marketing opportunity analysis okay after defining the strategy and after uh, analyzing SWOT then we can talk about how to identify how to analyze a marketing opportunity or how do we understand if the marketing opportunity best suits the firm so are the values in the opportunity convincing for the target segment in order to answer this question we need to answer other questions as well okay can you reach the target segment with cost-effective methods is it cost efficient does the firm have the required resources and capabilities to make that marketing opportunity work to make that marketing plan work can the firm present this opportunity better than the existing firms is the financial return on investment sufficient for this marketing opportunity so these are the other questions that we had uh, answered or another one is attractiveness of the opportunity and the possibility of success is important and environmental threats and seriousness and possibility of happening those trends are also important factors in identifying a marketing opportunity so finally i would like to talk to you about innovation i mean so how how, how it is related to innovation i mean this, those marketing opportunities analysis strategy value plan how are they related to each other so in this slide i would like to talk about how to create an innovation based on those main marketing concepts so the first strategy that i would like to tell you is to satisfy an unmet need okay find an unmet need so it can be a latent need as i told you before or it can be a, even a stated need but nobody has dared to satisfy that need before for example it can be i mean uh, let me tell you something i was talking to a businessman in my hometown in one of the cities called denizli in anatolia and one of the businessmen is saying he needs to travel a lot to, into anatolia into the other uh, cities be, uh, because he has investments there but since there is no direct flight he has to travel by his own car and it causes problems in terms of safety 
in terms of uh, time, I mean, uh, in terms of other stuff as well. So there might be an opportunity here to create a private jet company or private, uh, private transportation company for those type of consumers. And I don't know yet, I mean, if this opportunity is attractive, sustainable or profitable, but it seems like there is an unmet need here. Okay, the, the, the need is not satisfied yet. Okay. The second one is offer, the second strategy is offering a new product, a new service or a new technology. Okay, so it's like, actually it's at the heart of the disruptive innovations. When Clayton Christensen first came with this concept of disruptive innovation, he was asking the main question of, why does the companies, why do the companies fail? I mean, even the greatest companies, why do they fail? Look at Nokia, look at BlackBerry. They were the market leaders. I mean, after becoming market leaders with 30, 50% market share, now they are obsolete. Okay, now their market value went really down. So, I mean, we now talk about different companies. So why then those companies fail, okay? So it's because other companies came to existence with new products, with new services or with new technology. And most of the time, it doesn't have to be new technology. With the existing technology, you can provide a new service for a small niche, for a small target segment. Think about, uh, think about the Uber, Airbnb. Okay, Uber is the largest taxi company in the world and they don't own a single car. Airbnb is the largest hotel company in the world, but they don't own a single hotel. They don't own a single uh, building. Okay, so they are offering a new service with existing technologies and products. So at first, I mean, these were so small that big companies did not notice did not even notice because it wasn't profitable for them. But when it was profitable, those big companies say, hey, what's happening there? But it's too late at that moment. Another strategy is improving an existing market. Okay, so we can give an example of uh, low cost airlines, for example, Ryanair, EasyJet, Southwest Airlines. So those companies Actually, they were in they are in the flight business, okay? They're in the airline business, but they defined the segment. They defined the they redefined the industry in terms of different dimensions. They are offering the same flight. They are satisfying the same needs at a lower cost by offering different uh, products and uh, features. And finally, the fourth strategy is creating a new market, okay? So this is different than the uh, others above. Here, you create a new category, you create a new market. The, I, one of the best examples would be Google, actually. Okay, when Google first started, I mean, there were other search engines as well. So the innovation about search engine was not new, okay? The technology is new when Google was introduced. The technology was new. The crawling technology, the page rank technology, it was all new. But then the real innovation in terms of creating a new market is the AdSense and AdWords products of Google. So they created a whole new industry in the online search business called search engine marketing and search engine optimization. Okay, in conclusion, I would like to say the goal is the, to be better, to be faster, and to be cheaper. In order to be more competitive, in order to be profitable, and in order to be sustainable.